This is the Triumph Street Scrambler and it has the Bonneville twin cylinder water cooled engine and in this video we're going to give it a full and thorough review. Now this is the smaller version of the three Triumph Scramblers that are on the market. We recently reviewed the XE which is the sort of extreme off-road version of this bike uh, which has taller suspension and what have you. This is the lowest and the shortest one of the three um, and it also has a slightly smaller engine at 900cc compared to the 1200s of the other two um, but it's still a very powerful engine and it actually rides very nicely so on the road it's a really interesting and fun ride. It, it um, certainly accelerates quickly and the torques produce lower down in the rev range and you can feel that torque pulling from very low and it gives you a very nice ride. So this engine produces 64.1 brake horsepower, um, that's 65 PS and 47.8 kilowatts and that's its peak power um, which comes in at 7,500 RPM. So the torque comes in nice and low on this engine. Um, its peak torque is 80 newton meters and that is at 3,200 RPM. And what that means is that if you're going up a hill or overtaking, um, you're not gonna have to change down as much because the grunt's there when you need it. So um, yeah, it's a nice and smooth engine. Now, when I first got on this bike, um, the, the pegs are a little further back than I was imagining them to be. And also with this accessory um, guard here, you can find yourself kicking it. So if you've got big feet, if you're size 11 or 12 like I am, um, it could do with being a bit further forward or completely out of the way altogether, actually. So the wheelbase on this bike is 1,445 millimetres, um, which is quite short and you've got a rake of 25.6 degrees and you've got a trail of 109 millimetres and all of those figures combined is what gives this bike its quick steering. Now having ridden lots of the Triumphs I've noticed one thing in common with all of them and that is the geometry that Triumph engineers have uh, built in is for very quick steering um, and this is no exception. It's not the quickest steering of all the models uh, but it's certainly on that end of the scale and if you look at the scale and go to the other end you've got your cruisers like the Harley Davidson breakout would be right at the other end of the scale and the BMW R18 where the handling is much more stable and the steering isn't as quick but um, they do corner nicely but they are very stable even in the corners and as you get down the scale most bikes are somewhere in the middle triumph for right at that end where the fine line is there between stability and quick steering. Um, this doesn't feel unstable, but you're certainly at that end of the scale where the steering is very quick. A lot of people like that, so it's like a sort of um, race bike or a super bike kind of handling, a very, very quick to steer. Um, but perhaps, personally, I prefer the other end of the scale, um, but we always put ourselves in the shoes of you, the buyer, so um, I know a lot of people like quick steering bikes. So, that's, that's the way this, this one is. So the weight of this bike is 203 kilos, that's dry, so without the fuel and the oils etc in it. Um, 
and for a road bike of this capacity that's about average weight um, but off-road that is quite heavy um, to give you a comparison a motocross bike um, weighs about 115 kilos so um, it's quite heavy for off-road riding the suspension on this doesn't have masses of travel and it's quite firm so if you do hit a bump you do feel it with this the brakes on this uh, pull up the bike nicely you have got a single disc at the front and a single at the rear obviously um, once you get used to where the pedal is as I say it's a bit further back than I was thinking compared to the uh, Triumph Scrambler XE which we recently rode um, but the, the stopping power is pretty good so you've got a 12 litre fuel tank on the Triumph Street Scrambler and the miles per gallon figures for this bike are 68 0.9 miles per gallon or 4.1 litres per 100 kilometres. Um, these are the official figures um, but in real life you're probably not going to get as close to that because they do it in perfect conditions um, so you probably get near that if you're lucky. Now I am six foot three, so you can gauge by looking at me sitting on the bike how you will fit. Um, it feels quite roomy, and this has um, an accessory pack which we'll go into, um, which has the flat bench seat, so you can go way back, and there's tons of room, and you can come all the way forwards. So there's lots of movement on the seat, but I think I think the riding position is quite nice. So just as another comparison. Um, I'm around six foot two, six foot one, somewhere in between, and this has a seat height of 790 millimetres. So you can gauge again um, whether this bike would be all right for you at your height. So this particular example um, has the Inspiration kit. So it's to start with, it's got the Vance and Hines silencer. Um, that actually sounds really nice. I think it sounds nicer than the. Um, Arrow, was it Arrow and Exhaust that was on the XE? I think it sounds nicer than that. It's a bit louder, um, a bit deeper, and um, yeah, it's a really nice sound exhaust. Um, you've also got the pannier and the fitment kit. Um, it does stick out quite um, a bit, so when you're getting on the bike, you've got to get used to where it is, because both of us hit our knees on it the first time getting off of it. So um, yeah, you've got to be watch, watch, um, watch out for that. So you've got a metal sump guard um, in this kit. Um, the standard sump guard is plastic, so that's definitely something that you'll want. Um, you've got the dresser bar as well, um, which is this. Um, now that's good if you drop it, because it's going to protect the engine and the bike. Um, but if you have got big feet, it does get in the way, so um, you've got to watch out for that. There's also a machined oil filler cap. Um, you've got this padded uh, handlebar brace as well and you've got a headlight um, guard and bezel now this is good to protect the light um, but if you do want to wash the light you could probably want to screw that off because you can't get to it the, um, this kit also comes with a number board um, kit for the side so you can put a number on it um, this bike in particular hasn't got that on it um, we've also got the high mud guard on this bike um, but that's not part of the Inspiration kit. So if you wanted the Inspiration kit and all the things that it comes with, um, that would be an extra £1,630.58 um, to the original £9,300 that the base model costs. Now the gears on this are so smooth, up and down, um, whether you blip the throttle or not, um, they're silky smooth and they change without any problem whatsoever, there's no clunkiness, uh, it's buttery smooth. So it is called a street scrambler and really that's where it's at home. Um, as I said before, you could do uh, gentle trail riding on it, um, and it would be fine as long as you took it gingerly, then you've got the, uh, the higher up models, the XC and the XE, which have a little bit more off-road capability, but even so, they're not enduro or motocross bikes, so you have to sort of take it easy because they're both heavy bikes, and it's really sort of just to get out into the countryside carefully rather than go around racing like your um, Travis Pastrana.
So the base price of this bike is £9,300. Um, there's lots of accessories you can get for it, so that of course will add to that price. Now, I really like this Bonneville engine. Um, it makes a beautiful road bike engine, I must say. Uh, Off-road, you don't need a lot of power, so um, yes, it's fine for trail riding in the dry, in the summer months, or in countries where it's very dry, no problem at all. But in the British um, wet climate, I mean, it's always muddy, um, slippery grass, you know, it's too much power and torque, you don't need it. And of course, the tyres are a limiting factor as well, so these are pretty much road bias tyres. Um, if you were going to go off-road at all, you do need knobbly tyres. So you've got a 10,000 mile service interval with this bike. Um, you've also, you can get an A2 kit for it, so if you are on your A2 licence, um, get in contact with your dealer and they can do that for you. Um, you've also got an immobiliser on this bike and you've got a USB port. Now the XE has a different um, dash to this. It has a sort of computerised dash with lots of lights and flashing bits and modes and menus and bits and pieces. Um, and if you follow our channel, you know we're not mad fans of that sort of thing. This has got a nice analogue speedometer, which is much easier to read and very simple. And then you've got a little digital display below that where you can flick through um, your different um, settings so you can see your miles per gallon, uh, your range and all that sort of thing and your RPM. And then you've got a little button on the left here to flick through your modes. It's got three modes. Um, and when you're on the move to change the mode, you need to put the clutch in for it to engage the next mode. You've got rain, road and off-road modes. Um, so it's fairly simple in terms of modes. And as we've said many times, we're not huge fans of modes because the characteristic of the bike can change quite dramatically sometimes. So when you get used to one mode and you go to another, it feels like you're riding a different bike and the sensitivity of the throttle is, is more um, in road than it is in rain and so on, it can catch you out. So you have to be very careful of that. So adding to what the display shows you, um, it shows you your RPMs, as we said. Um, it tells you what gear you're in. Um, you've got your fuel gauge. You've got your range to empty, so that's very handy. Um, so you know when you need to fill up. Um, this bike's got five gears, by the way, so you know which one you're in. Um, and you've also got a service reminder, you've got a clock to tell you the time, and you've got a trip timer so you see how far you've gone. Now the mirrors are quite high and wide, um, but so am I. So unfortunately, I can only see half of the road behind me. Um, but if you were a bit shorter than me, you'd probably find that was okay. So these levers are adjustable, um, but um, if you have done motocross, you'll be used to braking um, and putting the clutch in with two fingers and having two on the on the handlebar. Um, now, because these aren't dog leg levers, you will get your fingers stuck. Um, that's really just a habit from motocross from the old man, um, and it's not really something most people will be worried about. Now, we did try a tiny little bit of off-road riding in this, and we went over our usual bump that we test ride bikes over and the suspension did bottom out so um, if you are going to go off-road on this it's as we said just trail riding in the dry and you'd be fine. Now this bike does actually have an A2 license map, so if you are 19, 20, whatever, you can get this mapped by your dealer to be slightly less power, so it brings it within the law in the UK and EU. Um, so you could ride this bike and that will be fine. Uh, if you've got your full license and you have the bike as it comes, full power, um, I'd say it's quite easy to ride. Um, I'd say in road mode it is powerful and you would need to treat it with respect because it accelerates very quickly. So take it easy to start with, get used to it, maybe ride it around in rain. Um, and rain still gives you plenty of power, um, but it just numbs it down a little bit. So get used to it gradually. Um, after a week or two, you'd be absolutely fine. So our summary of this bike, um, it's a very good looking bike. It's nice and compact. Um, it's a good road bike. 
It's very easy to ride. It's very nimble. Um, if you like sharp handling, it's very rewarding. Um, you could do light off-roading on it, but I wouldn't want to do any heavy off-roading. Um, and just all round, it's a very good um, bike on the road, especially. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, um, subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more bikes coming. We've got another Triumph next week, and we'll have all the new models when they come out next year. Um, make sure you check out our t-shirt store. We've got plenty of different designs, hoodies, t-shirts, sweatshirts, the lot. Um, there's new designs all the time. Um, you can see them in the carousel below, and leave your comments below what you think of this bike.